It's Thursday. We're in Lake George. I'm going to town to do the self-guided tour and learn some history. It's about a quarter to 11 on Thursday. Thursday's a pretty happening day here. There's going to be some fireworks later tonight. Today we're going to go into town and we're going to do the self-guided tour of Lake George. There's the lake in front of us. This is the path from Lake George Battleground Campground. That's St. George, George's, George's? I don't think I'm saying that right. I was calling them St. George, but it's spelled with a J. I'll put it up on the screen. You could pronounce it any way you like. Poor man. Horrible story. This is, this is uh, gonna be number five when we get around to it. We're gonna start at number one today. So this is our regular path into town from our campground. It's a nice walk. Up there is the day use area and some more historical ruins and whatnot will be over there later. And that way is town, the golf course, you know, the, the mini golf course, the mini haha, -ha, and all the, the steamboats. All right, we'll be back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're taking the self-guided tour of Lake George, New York. It's a real resort town in the Adirondack Mountains. All right, so I'm a bit out of my comfort zone here. This is a resort town. It's kind of like urban camping. Uh, we are boondocking in the campground behind us, so there's no water, there's no electric, there's no sewer. There's a pump out, there's a fresh water supply, and I've got my generator and solar panels. Uh, going into town, there's just a ton of people. It's not my cup of tea, but gritting my teeth and dealing with it. It's a beautiful place, beautiful views. Now, if you go up the lake, there's more secluded areas to be. Yesterday, we spent the day kayaking and paddle boarding on the Hudson River with Bella. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, here's number one on the list, the old courthouse. Warren County Government, September 1813 to 1963, built in 1845, now home of Lake George Historical Association. On the National Register of Historic Places, Lake George Institute of History and Science, restored it. It's dedicated to the memory of Winnie LaRose. That's the Warren County Bicentennial from 2013. Okay. That's a courthouse. I guess this is really the only way I want to see a courthouse from the outside. What do we have here? This marker was erected in 1913 by Warren County. Looks like it's their centennial. March 2nd, 1810. Wow. To the Artillery Cove, it's the Marine Village Resort. It's nestled around the Artillery Cove. Part of the motel sits. Part of the motel sits on filled area, which once was part of Artillery Cove. So I guess they decided a motel was more important than the historical aspect. Let's see. In August of 1757, this is where the Marquis de General landed cannons and mortars for an assault upon Fort William Henry, and thus gave the cove its name. Hmm. Hey, this is the Marine Village Resort. This is where number two, the Artillery Cove, is located. Not really much of a hotel. It's full up. On the lake. We won't be intruding. This is the Marine Village. This is where number two on the self-guided tour is located. I don't see it anywhere, but this is what I couldn't get from the road. Just an average resort. Nothing really special. But I believe it was Artillery Point. It was one of the points on the map that I couldn't find. Okay, we're coming up on number three, Montcalm's Camp, historic marker. It's right up ahead, up on that little hill. 
Okay, on these grounds, Montcalm's armed camp during the siege of Fort William Henry in August of 1757. Better light on this side. Now it's a school. It's Lake George Junior Senior High School. Okay. Number two was over there. This is number three. The Moose Tooth Grill. Very nice show, perfect. That's great, man. Thanks. Okay, that was three, we're heading to four. This is number four, the sunken fleet. Let's see if I can get a better shot on this side for you. In the fall of 1758, British American sank Radu Land Tortoise Sloop Halifax 260 Bateau and to avoid winter plunder by French parties. I'll have to reread that, I think. Is that English? Now, there's some sunken boats here. Number four. There's the lake. It looks like all the police boats, too. All right. And so far, we were at the courthouse. We went down the block to see something that wasn't there someone's encampment and now a sunken fleet. Off to number five. Hey, this is number five, Montcalm's entrenchments. It's Shepherd's Park. Middle of town. Right on the lake. Moving on to number six, Warship Row. It's over on the other side of the wharf. Okay, this is number six, Warship Row and the Mayor Robert M. Blas Walkway and Park. It's from here down to the Steel Pier. I just keep going straight ahead to the Steel Pier where the flag is. This is all on the steel pier, right? This is Lake George Steamboat Company and Steel Pier. Ah, thank you very much, Steamboat Property. I'm proud to be your guest. I will be respectful, I promise. Let's see now. Right over there is Shepherd's Park. Next to it was the courthouse, that was number one. Down that way it was Artillery Cove, which was part of a resort. Across the street was an encampment. Coming back in town there were sunken, sunken ships. We saw those, that's right about there, next between the Artillery Cove and Shepherd's Park. We walked along the lake walk, and now this is the steel pier. And they allow people to come here and fish. And in addition to fishing, they get to rock the dock. All right. That sounds like it's gonna be a fun party. When are we rocking the dock? This weekend? This weekend? Nice, nice. I'll have to come back. How much fun? The dock. That's gonna be on the weekends. Big party. This is Minnehaha. This is the Steel Pier, the home of the Lake George Steamboat Company, the Mohegan, the St. Sacrament, and the Minnehaha. There's always something woo around here. 
cannon fire coming out of the fort. Just kind of hoping I'd get lucky and see one go off. Another one that's not on the list. There's a submerged track underwater here. Uh, it lies in 5 to 15 feet of water. It was operated from 1910 until 1950. They launched boats from rail cars into the lake. That might be an idea that's worth bringing back. Okay, this one is number eight. It's a military dock. During the French and Indian War, British and provincial troops used the dock near here for loading soldiers, artillery, and supplies. In June 1992, the Lake George Historical Association erected this historical marker. Okay, let's go have a look at the dock. It's not really the dock that they used. It's just the place where the dock was. No. Be thorough. We'll go see it. Hmm. This is where they had the military dock. It's just a marker. Really along here is the dog beach. This is where you take your dog to go swimming. Okay, that's number eight. Yep, the military dock. Whew, I need a break. Number nine, the Radu warship. The land tortoise. It was built by colonial and British troops near this site in 1758. It lies two miles north and 107 feet of water. Okay. Yep. Where there's war, there's gonna be wrecks. Maybe if we stop butchering each other, we won't have wrecks. All right, our quest brings us into Lake George Battlefield Park. We're on our way to the Battle of Lake George, September 8th, 1755. All right, let's go back in time. Just taking a quick break at the top, admiring a statue here, the Battle of Lake George, September 8th, 1755. I wonder if this is the marker I'm looking for. Yes, in 1903, the Society of Colonial was erected this monument to commemorate the victory of the colonial forces under General William Johnson and their Mohawk allies. Very good. That's number 10, the Battle of Lake George, September 8th, 1755. In the state Park to the left are the ruins of Old Fort George. About here in 1755, the French under Baron Descau were defeated by the British colonists under Sir William Johnson. So Johnson beat Descau. Sounds like Dooku, doesn't it? Hmm. Sir William. Hmm. Sounds like Obi Wan going up against Dooku. Those of you who follow Star Wars. This is number 11, Fort George. The ruins. The ruins. In June 1759, British General Geoffrey Amherst arrived at Lake George and soon proceeded to build the new fort at the lake. The site was the high ground east of the ruins of Fort William Henry, which had been destroyed by the French in 1757. A provincial officer described the fort as the walls are about 14 foot thick and built of stone and lime. In 1760, Amherst said of the fort, George, the bastion enclosed at Fort George is very neat, mounts 15 guns, is very small but up and had bad defense, but was the shortest, cheapest, and best method, best method of finishing what was begun at the fort. Oh, interesting. For you. Okay, stick at the base. The ruins of Fort George. And that's number 11 on the self-guided tour of Lake George. Next, we're going to the entrenched camp from 1757. Woo, we're off. Number 12, next. Okay, so I don't see a marker on number 12, but I'll read it for you. During the French siege of Fort William Henry in August of 1757, the majority of provincial American colonists and British troops under the command of Lieutenant Colonel George Monroe were stationed on this high ground east of the fort.
These troops were protected by an entrenchment camp consisting of a breastwork of logs designed by James Montessor, the chief British engineer in America. The camp was also fortified with six cannons and a number of swivel guns. The entrenched camp played a prominent role in the chaos that followed the surrender of Fort William Henry on the afternoon of August 9, 1757. Native American warriors aligned with the French army climbed over the breastworks of the entrenched camp and began to pillage, seeking trophies of what? Huh. Maybe a few ghosts floating around in here, huh? Chaos. Whew. Okay, off to the next. Number 12 was the entrenched camp. That's where we are. And next, we are going to the Native American statue. Number 13, the statue of the Native American. In the center of Battlefield Park is a bronze statue of a Native American. According to a state document, he is dipping water in the cup of his hand from a spring. This fine statue is a memorial to the Indians who once freely roamed the region. The statue was dedicated in 1921 and was a gift of George D. Pratt. Native American played crucial roles in the area's early history. As many as 30 to 40 Native American tribes, some from as far away as Mississippi fought in the August 1757 siege of Fort William Henry. This statue represents these early Americans prior to the advance of the Europeans. So he's dipping his hand into a spring. It's a beautiful statue. And that's number 13, the Native American historic statue. Next, Unknown Soldiers Historic Monument. Number 14. It's an historic monument, a memorial to our four unknown soldiers who fell September 8, 1755 in the bloody morning. Scouts led by Colonel Ephraim Williams and King Hendrick against the French and Indians under Baron Discado, Disco, Discow. The remains were disinterred in building a state highway in 1931 and reburied under this monument erected by state education and conservation departments and New York State Historical Association in 1935. There you have it. This is where number 15 is on the map. I don't see a marker here. It is high ground up there. Some kind of a stone formation. But I'm not seeing any fort. I'm not seeing any sign. I go up the bike path here. The stockade should be along this stretch of road on the left. So we'll keep our eyes open. Uh, let's see the stockade fort. 1759, two stockade log forts were constructed on the site in 1758. Another the following year in the absence of a garrison fort that could withstand the siege during the winter months of 1758-59. The troops dismantled the fort's barracks and buried the boards for retrieval the next year. On June 28, 1759, Lieutenant Colonel William Eyer, who had earlier supervised the construction of Fort William Henry, began erecting a post of logs on the hillside overlooking the lake, which would serve during the time that the largest stone fort for George was being built. And this is it. High ground, right at the end of the lake. They used it to defend while they were building old Fort George. Okay, moving on to number 16, which is the Knox Cannon Historical Monument. Okay, we're almost done, just a few more stops to make. We are touring Lake George. We're taking the self-guided tour around town. Uh, I'm able to get to the location, look around, know where I am. The views are beautiful. It's a wonderful summer afternoon. Getting some good exercise. Learning some of our history. And we're off to number 16.
1755 was a rough year to be around here. This is number 16, the Knox Cannon Monument. Through this place passed General Henry Knox in the winter of 1775-76 to deliver to General George Washington at Cambridge the train of auxil the train of artillery from Fort Ticonderoga used to force the British Army to evacuate Boston. Alright. Long way to go to get to Ticonderoga. That's number 16, the Knox Cannon. Off to number 17, the Smallpox Hospital. I keep walking like I said, I'm going to need a hospital. As frustrating as this is, it's a beautiful place to spend the day walking around. I'm working up a sweat, getting some good exercise, some fresh air, in a beautiful place on the side of Lake George. Trying to soak up a bit of the history, you know. Remember those who made it possible for us to be here? It's a lot of work, but I think they had it harder than me, don't you? Just to them and all they did. Hey, this is the site of the Smallpox Hospital in 1776. Bit of a problem back then, I believe. All right, after the evacuation from Canada in 1776, the American army in the Northern Theater was ravaged by smallpox and other infectious diseases. As a result, the Major General Horatio Gates wrote to George Washington that a general hospital would be established at Fort George to isolate infected soldiers from the rest of troops at Ticonderoga. All right, sounds like a good idea to me. Got a lot of sick troops, you need a good hospital. And this is where they put it. That is number 17, the Smallpox Hospital from 1776. Moving right along. Okay, number 18, Battlefield Park Visitor Interpretive Center. Doesn't seem like much is going on here. Let's go see what's on around front. Well, I guess up front is the Lake George Park Commission office. Okay. Uh, yet another misleading description. Okay. Next one is Father Yogs. He's right by the campground. Coming right up. Okay, number 19. A beautiful bronze sculpture of Father Yogs, historical monument. Ad morium del glorium, to the greater glory of God. The bronze statue commemorates the life of Father Isaac Yogues, a French missionary born in 1609 in Orleans, France, the birthplace of Joan of Arc. He was captured by the Mohawks in 1642 and tortured when several of his fingers were gnawed off by his captors. He eventually escaped and returned to France. Yogues then came back to New France, Canada then, and departed south into New York. He was again captured by the Mohawks, where he was tortured and killed when they blamed him for their crop failure. Yogues named the lake Lac du Saint Sacrament, Lake of the Saint Sacrament when he saw the lake in 1646. The lake was renamed Lake George in 1755 by General William Johnson in honor of King George II. In 1930, Yogues was canonized a saint by the Roman Catholic Church. This monument was erected by the state of New York in July of 1939. There you go, poor, to poor tortured Frenchman. Oof. Scary story, but he did manage to get himself a fine monument in a beautiful location, so happy ending? You decide. That was number 19. Number 20 is Fort William Henry. We were kind of already there once earlier looking for something else, but might as well be complete. We've got number 20 and 21 to do, and we are done with the tour. Take two. We're 
in the middle of town. We found number 20, Fort William Henry. I don't know how to find it. It's the middle of town. We're going to go up that flight of stairs and see what's in there. I heard there's a cemetery to find. Fort William Henry. Let's go. Okay, that's number 20, Fort William Henry. Now we want to find number 21, Fort William Henry Cemetery and Memorial. Hmm, should be around back here somewhere. Okay, this is number 21, Fort William Henry Cemetery and Memorial. The accompanying photograph shows archaeology done at Fort William Henry in the 1950s when the fort was excavated and restored in May of 1993. Fort William Henry modified an outdoor exhibit on the same, on the site of the old colonial cemetery. The exhibit portrays the 1950s excavation and subsequent display of human skeletal remains from 1757 siege and massacre. In 1993, the human skeletal remains were examined by an anthropologist from the local community college. <laughs> The information from the skeletons can supplement and timely and times verify historical accounts providing detail of life not available from other sources. Very interesting. Let's go have a look at the Fort William Henry Memorial Center. So this basically depicts an archaeological dig that they did back in the 1950s when they found some bodies while they were doing some road construction. These have been taken away and they've been studied by archaeologists and they are on display somewhere else. I'm not sure where. I'm a bit tired. Yeah, pictures of archaeologists. There's their intricate details that they would take. That's that kind of science, you know. You gotta be real detail-oriented. Two parts of the muster rolls of Captain Samuel Thexter's Massachusetts Company indicating those missing in action at Fort William Henry. I see. These are the poor guys that are here. They just don't know who's who yet. All right. Well, that is number 21. This marker commemorates those men and women who died in the siege of Fort William Henry in 1757, exhumed during the archaeological excavations in 1953. Their remains were given this final resting place May 31st, 1993. 
that concludes this episode everybody that is the self-guided tour of Lake George 21 stops of varyingly interesting historical data it was a nice walk I worked up a good sweat got some exercise and had a great day now I'm gonna get back to camp take a shower and have something to eat thanks so much for joining me if you enjoyed this content please give us a thumbs up hit the subscription button in hit the subscription button in the lower corner and leave me a comment below thank you for watching Ha, 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 ha.